What it do, family? My fellow brethren, brothers and sisters, kings and queens, international. Hey, mob, all that right day. You now tuned in to FTM Academics, Religious Purposes, Follow the Mazai, Follow the Mission, Faithfully Transcending Mountains, Falls Transition Maximize from the mob, aka my other brethren. Um, you know, full tenacity mode, you know, um... Academics, you have it. All right, so basically today is reading. It's not even an assignment today. Today, um, I'm still in English 225, Introduction to Film, Asheville University, a.k.a. IMAX Mob Academy. But right now, we're reading this book, The Power of We, Succeeding Through Partnerships by Jonathan M. Titch. And um, I checked this book out from Anacostia Library uh, back in... Back in 2016 when I was going in for my uh my senior year of high school or whatever. And so, I ain't never returned that joint. And I just know, y'all, like, back then, I swear to God, right hand to God, only God know. I was running for president back then. 2016, I was running for president of the United States of America. Right hand. When they first elected Trump in there, I was in the city. Right hand on the south side, running for president. I was at the library almost every morning. Real lab. At the library on the computer, bro, I checked out like 12 books, bro, and never read them joints. Like, it was so much information. I was bombarded with, like, all this information. I was just planning on getting enrolled in the college back then. Real life. Like, I was I was planning on getting enrolled in the college back before I even graduated senior year because uh, one of the requirements for all uh, natives of Washington, D.C., all students, you have to get accepted into a college. You might not go. But you have to get accepted into a college in order to walk across whatever stage uh, you're attending, whatever school stage you're attending in order to graduate. You have to get accepted into the college. Only reason I didn't go to college straight from 2016 is because uh, at the end of my uh, academic experience at Anacostia High, I found out, which I should have been found out, but I had just found out at the end that D.C. required 24 credits. And Maryland required 21 credits to graduate. And so me transitioning from Maryland to D.C., I was short three credits. And I was already having to make up my, uh, I was already having to catch up, long story short, because I got kicked out of Maryland schools. And I wasn't able to get back re-enrolled into uh, public schools until I got off a of house arrest. And that was January of 2016 when I first turned 18 and since I was 18 I was able to enroll myself in DC um but I didn't get enrolled until like March so I had to catch up on all that lost time I was out of school from like Halloween October 31st to January nah October 31st to like March 7th I was out of school October 31st of 15 to March 7th of 16, I was out of school, and so I re-enrolled myself. Long story short, still running for president, you know what I'm saying? 20 years from now, you see me in the White House, just know, you know, should the Lord be willing, I called it in advance, you know what I'm saying? He called it in advance, more, you know, accurately stated. But uh, the power of we, like I said, and y'all gonna get all y'all books back. Uh, I just gotta, I gotta, I gotta get my work done, you know what I mean? So... We're going to go ahead and read, and hopefully um, I'm going to finish this first chapter. I'm going to try to read at least two chapters a day. Go ahead and start knocking these books out, but I'm going to keep y'all updated with this experience. And so we're going to go ahead and read. This book is about a principle of leadership. Excuse me. Let me run that back. Chapter one, the power of partnerships, getting from me to we. Coming together is a beginning. Keeping together is progress. Working together is success. Henry Ford, born 1863, deceased 1947, American industrialist. Excuse me, American industrialist. This book is about a principle of leadership that I call the power of partnerships. It's a simple philosophy based on putting aside our individual concerns in order to work together toward a greater good. For business people like me, the power of partnerships can produce dramatic benefits from, for the bottom line. Whenever managers, employees, communities, shareholders, and even competitors join forces in pursuit of shared goals, everybody wins. Emphasis on everybody. 
It's an approach to leadership that is not divisive, but unifying. Not competitive, but collaborative. Not based on a zero-sum philosophy of scarcity, but on abundance. The economic, intellectual, and spiritual abundance that human beings can produce when their talents and energies are unleashed. The power of partnerships has worked for our company, Lowe's Hotels, benefiting our employees, our owners, and the communities we serve. And as I'll explain in this book, it's also working for many individuals, businesses, and other organizations in almost every field of human endeavor. And I said endeavor, but it's endeavor, you know, human endeavor, endeavor, tomato, tomato, potato, potato, you know. And before we go to page two, you know, I mean, this ain't just coming from me. This coming from people who's twice my age, people who's been on this planet longer than me, the power of we. Like, you know, the Lord know what he's doing. I'm Max Mob Incorporated didn't just come out the woodworks. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, Slim. And especially since we got this right here. I'm about to get back to that, but you know, we got this right here. <clears throat> I'm Max Mob Incorporated didn't just come out the woodworks, homes. That's a beautiful African-American family right there. And that's not even the full extent of my mob, my other brethren. That's not even the full extent of that. You know what I'm saying? They go Miss Rogers. They go to Smith's. Sister and, 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 and sister, sister, sister. You know, sister, sister. That's sister, sister, the black folks. You hear me? My mother and my aunt. They go my sister. Two. 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 Where my dude at? They go my dude. You hear me? And y'all know him right there. And that's not the full extent of the mob. You know what I'm saying? My other brother, my family, we international. Family looking at me right now, I'm talking to y'all. Back to the basics, though. It's a mob party, you know? I make anything exclusive on my own alongside my other brethren. You know what I'm saying? Moving forward, page two. This isn't the standard approach to business. Most of the heralded CEOs you see on the cover, excuse me, on the cover of Fortune magazine or being interviewed on CNBC didn't get there by talking about partnerships. Some of them pride themselves on their ability to squeeze, manipulate, and exploit other people. Of course, they probably don't use those words. Management Gurus have developed plenty of euphemisms, but in the end, the classic hard-driving business leader most Americans are familiar with achieves results through power and fear, not through collaboration. It's a model of leadership that dates back to the robber barons of the 19th century and survives today in the newest dog-eat-dog reality TV show, The Apprentice. Yet, history shows that the power of intimidation is often short-lived. As the, master man, excuse me, as the master manipulators of the 1990s are discovering, one by one, the effectiveness of leading through fear eventually fades. And when your ethical lapses eventually come back to ruin you, few of those who once flattered you are really sorry to see you go. Deep down, I believe most business people, most people from any walk of life, are idealistic. They like to believe that it's impossible to succeed by appealing to the best in their fellow humans, that the power of partnerships is real and not a naive fantasy. Excuse me. I hope I didn't say impossible. I said they'd like to believe that it's possible to succeed by appealing to the best in their fellow humans, a.k.a. my other brethren, that the power of partnerships is real and not a naive fantasy. But many people find it hard to break away from cynical assumptions about human nature. I see the skepticism on their faces when I talk about the amazing things that real partnerships can achieve. I can almost hear them thinking, this all sounds very nice and it probably works up to a point. When times are good, people are willing to work together and share the rewards. But it's a different story when times are bad. When the crunch comes, it's everyone for himself. The law of the jungle rules. That's just the way people are. This attitude is very hard-nosed, realistic, and cold-blooded, and dead wrong. Emphasis on dead wrong, like, like, where is that? Excuse me for having my camera kind of, kind of twisted, but dead wrong. 
I can tell you that when the crunch comes, the vast majority of people will respond to an appeal for corporation, mutual support, and teamwork. And that's that's real life, bro. Like when the, when the going gets tough, when the going gets tough, bro, you looking for somebody to lean on, bro. I don't care who you is. I don't care what you say. I don't care how high or how low you are. When the going gets tough, when that crunch season comes, Slim, when the crunch gets here, you looking for somebody to lean on, bro. You looking for an advocate, bro. That's like saying in the wintertime when it gets ice cold outside, you looking to warm up. If you see somebody, I don't even care if it was your worst enemy yesterday. It's negative 3,500 degrees outside, and, and it boils down to you freezing cold or you linking up with your worst enemy starting a fire and making sure y'all both can, can attract heat together, both can survive and be sustainable together. Man, look. Man, look. And I ain't even get today. This is FTM Academics, but we're going to transition over to 3MFGC later on for tonight's Bible study. And and, and 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 I ain't even get to the message, man, about forgiveness, mo. Forgiveness, mo. You got to forgive, you know what I'm saying, in order to move on. You got to forgive as you need and want to be forgiven. That's just standard. That's that's standard morals, you know, standard morality, you know what I'm saying? And so I said all that to say this, you know what I'm saying? Teamwork makes the dream work. That's always been the case. Teamwork makes the dream work. No one individual did anything by themselves. Nobody. Nobody, not you and not me, nobody. So I say all that to say this, man. When the going gets tough and the, and the, and the, and the, and the tough gets crunchy, man, look, I'm telling y'all, I need help. I need y'all help. And if y'all need my help, all you got to do is say it. And even if you don't say it, I'm still going to help. I'm helping right now. You helping me. We helping each other. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, though. But, um. Mutual support and teamwork. If a few leaders show by their own attitudes, words, and actions that they really believe in the power of partnerships, most people around them will, will rise to the occasion and join in the effort for excuse me, in the effort for the good of all. Titch's tips. Think about your own attitudes towards the people you work with and the organizations you contribute to. Do you assume that most people are motivated only by self interest? Maybe life in today's hard knock world has made you cynical. If so, try opening your mind to a more positive, idealistic point of view. People can be motivated by interests other than self. The power of partnerships is real and it works. The power of partnerships isn't a brand new idea. Smart leaders in business, politics, and nonprofit organizations have long operated through partnerships, but it's an idea that has come, excuse me, but it's an idea that has become more timely than ever. In today's complex world, no one can be all things to all people. No single organization is capable of mobilizing all the resources required to accomplish everything it needs to do. Therefore, we must work with and through other organizations. For businesses, the organizations we need to partner with include other companies as well as industry associations, which advocate for us in the public arena, educational institutions, which provide us with skilled employees, civic groups, which help shape a society in which we can work and do business comfortably, and government agencies, which provide a framework of laws, regulations, and infrastructure that allows business to operate. The power of partnerships begins with the recognition that no organization exists in a vacuum. We can achieve success and prosperity only by working effectively with others. But managing by partnership means more than this. It also means redefining the terms of traditional business relationships and transforming them from adversarial to com excuse me, from adversarial to cooperative. In essence, it means shifting your philosophy of relationships from covet emptor let the buyer beware to the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have others do unto you. And so I'm only cutting this short because my 15-minute IG video is about to run up. It's uh, currently on 1439. Uh, we're going to continue moving forward with the power of we. I just might not, you know, document every page. Of course, I'm not going to be able to do that. You know what I'm saying? But, um, you know, if y'all would like to go look up the book, go look up the book. And the video about the end, 